Hey everybody and welcome to Myopia Movies. This week we are following up on a riff that Cineprod did at the beginning part of the month on Dick Tracy. Now, if you have not seen Dick Tracy or heard the riff before, it is Madonna, Warren Beatty, and you should join our Patreon or pay five bucks to Cineprod to get a copy of that riff. It was good. Uh, for the riff, we have a lot of Cineprod people. Uh, Fitzy, Evan, and Candace are on panel with me talking about the movie. But honestly, guys, we had a blast. This is a great show, and I hope you enjoy it. If you have not followed us yet on Patreon, you should. Uh, for five bucks, you get an extra worth a month and an extra mission briefing every other month, plus a, you know, uh, thing you write once a month. Uh, if you go to ten dollars, you get all the riffs backwards and forwards, and we've been putting out a riff a month, uh, so that's pretty good. And uh, thanks for all the support you give us. On Facebook, Twitter, Letterboxd, wherever. Thanks, guys. Welcome to Myopia Movies. If you haven't been paying attention, this is part two of our Dick Tracy epic with our Cineprov crew, in which part one was on our Patreon and our Cineprov feed, where we hey, riffed the movie. You could potentially watch it in the opposite order if you really wanted to. I don't want to label parts. Well, based on how much Larry has been like cheesing his steaks, um, <laughs> this probably will come out first probably. On, the, on, on, the, on the Cineprov feed. Yes. Uh, but regardless, uh, the Cineprov crew is back without the person who makes us feel uncomfortable to watch rape scenes. I'm the cop and host of my Defend Your Childhood movie, oh. movies, Cineprov Riffer, and on panel we've got... I'm Candace, I'm, and Nick just hit me. <laughs> I'm Christine, I'm also on Social Light Life. I'm Evan, and Nick somehow just hit me even though I'm sitting 10 feet across. <laughs> Stop it! It's okay. I'm a stretcher. I'm stronger. <laughs> he is. He's a, uh, honestly, if I were to describe Nick, Dr. Nick Hoffman as no, anything, fine. it would be a live action stretch Armstrong action figure. <laughs> My anonymity has been broken. No, <laughs> um, so tonight we watch 1990s Dick Tracy starring... Um, uh, everyone. War- <laughs> no, everyone you've ever heard of. Dustin Hoffman, Warren Beatty, and Madonna. <laughs> TV's Madonna. TV's Madonna. Yeah. Pornography's Madonna. Um, albums Madonna. This is the same year as um, Like a Virgin, I believe. It is, yeah. Um, yes. And all together... Uh, some or no, of the... is it Like a Prayer? No. No, it is not. Also, not the same thing. This movie needs a prayer. It does. Amen. Um, based on the like comic strip from the 40s and uh, Disappointment. Uh, on the other hand, it's also a lot like 300. Before we like really dissect this movie, I really, really want to give this movie props for looking the way it should. And I think more movies visually need to take cues from Dick Tracy. I will give credit where credit's due for miniatures and that paintings oh. and no CGI. And it looks like a thing that Candace looks like she's about to punch a, 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 one of our male uh, panelists in the paint. That's me! Oh, God! No, that's a happy face. I love miniatures. I love matte paintings. And I will also agree that give credit where credit's due, and that is Danny Elfman is a god. Yes. This movie looks and sounds like it should. It's almost, from that particular perspective, too good to be true. Sure. Like, when you read, if say you're a Dick Tracy fan, this movie uh, aesthetically is exactly... What I imagine would be in a Dick Tracy fan's head, right? And there are not a lot of movies I feel that accomplish that particular. <laughs> so feat. there you are, cracking into the skull of this is a uh, ninety, so a fifty-five-year-old man trying yeah, to figure out right. what's going well, on. I, it's just it feel it fills those gaps of fantasy visually, right? Um, I, I I think an interesting perspective to look at this is I'm a big like you know comic book and particularly manga fan, right? But if you compare this to like hentai, hentai, yeah, yeah. Uh, so many tentacles. That's art, and I like that too. Yeah. Thank you, Samuel Jackson. Um, but like, if you watch any adaptation of those movies uh, or of those particular comics, they don't do a good job of that. But if you watch like, say, anime adapting a manga, right? Like, you get like these these hyper. Uh, you get these, like, say, uh, say you're a big One Piece. Okay, no, no, right. here's what? the problem you're referring to. Sure. Akira was a masterpiece, and yeah. everyone gets it wrong. 
Mm. Right? Like, that's what it is. It's like hyper stylized, but they don't hyper understand what is going is, on. Yeah, absolutely the word I'm looking for. Right? Like, okay, so let, let me break down a, um, a, a manga or comic I really like. There's one called One Piece, right? And part of the reason the, the art works is uh, because the, uh, the action is all stretched and skewed and pushed to a very weird degree, right? Like, if somebody punches someone, that's not going to equate to if you just showed a like a guy punching someone, right? Like they the artist stretches it and skews it in the same way that this movie hyper uh, stylizes like outfits and things like that, right? I think that that is a necessary thing to bring kind of the imagination of comic books to life. You know what I mean? Yes, but before you keep talking with your beautiful mouth, which I will. Can anyone give us a plot synopsis no. of this movie? Uh-uh. I give you the first third and the back third, but that that middle third is just a fuck. I mean, because mess. when she walked by, everyone talked about her back third. Um, Madonna. There's some very disfigured gentlemen who um, all wear very large shoulder pad suits, and um, they're all kind of against Dick Tracy for some reason. And um, Dick Tracy is very fascinated with some orphan child called the child. Called the child. The kid. No, his name's Grogan. He's the kid. <laughs> And, you know, he goes on to um, sing karaoke at, in um, Can't Hardly Wait. So, right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And Hook. So, oh, I mean, true. He's, he's, in Hook. he's gone on to good things. And, you know, he um, has no sexual chemistry with um, the Ma- kid or Dick Tracy? Madonna Monroe. And, oh, wait. Madonna Lynn Monroe. Ma- Madonna. I will I- say they have sexual chemistry. That's Breathless Mahoney. Thank That's her name, but I, I'm i not certain I can stand by her having sexual chemistry. with. I me. mean, they were having sex She's got sexual film. chemistry because she's Madonna, yeah, but... Yeah, right. Oh, shit. Was I watching the 1945 <laughs> film? <laughs> Oopsies. Oopsie uh, doodles. So he, here's where the movie starts to kind of break apart for me. I don't know what the rub between Dick Tracy and the bad guys is. And I, ju- I literally... Not less than an hour ago, finished this movie. We oh, all watch this again. Okay. I don't yeah, y'all are doing a horrible job. Is. Let me give you a better synopsis. Well, Please. first of all, I want to oh, say God. you're doing it in the wrong order because this is LA Confidential, but this is like the Weird Al version oh, of it LA Confidential. Is. <laughs> I just I don't know what the problem. The here's the thing: the movie doesn't it doesn't super matter because they're bad guys and Dick Trace is a good guy. And exactly. It, and that's sort of all the setup you need. So so here's the canon. The but canon is that right. they had is that Dick Tracy is a detective. And he's always fighting bad guys. Yes. Okay, that's Which the backstory. Which is it's fine. In this film, he's searching for evidence that proves that Big Boy um, uh, Caprice is the city's most dangerous crime boss. And he may have found the key to unraveling this uh, illegal empire through Breathless Mahoney, who's Madonna, because she has witnessed multiple crimes, and he has her on the hook for knowing that she was there because of the earring that he found. And um, however, she's more set on stealing Dick Tracy's heart than helping him solve the crime and proving the case of his career. Okay, didn't get any of that. But but I will say, I think in that way, it might actually be a good like adaptation. Because if you're someone who is reading this comic week to week, say you miss a couple of weeks or you just you're just tuning in, you need to be able to kind of tune in at any second and be like okay dick trace is a good guy and he's just trying to figure out the bad guys and the bad guys are have a mysterious there's no scene. long arc here this is the right. x-file monster of the week kind of thing right it is, it is a monster of the week is. in it's, a movie it's, yeah it's it's an open and shut case it's here's bad guys i'm gonna fight you I'm going to punch one of you, but all of you fall over. That is the best scene I, in the movie. You got really excited during that time. I did. I did. I, I think, again, there's so much about the direction. And like I said earlier, the visuals of this movie that are, like, kind of unbelievable. Like, I, we have not seen a movie other than maybe, like, Spider-Verse and live-action Speed Racer that really kind of match this movie in terms of, like, comic aesthetic. Like, Yeah, I mean... It, I gotta tell you, it reminds me of every 1989, 1990s film at that time. They, you think they so? All, yes, they all Batman, had this. Batman's also up there. Yes, first they all had this well, look about them. First, yeah. Batman well, did true, come true. First, so, um, but a lot of films had this look about them, and but I like it. I, I like that that over ridiculous. Everything looks like a Lego color. 
kind of a lot of know, primary there's colors. There's a lot of primary so colors primary going colors. on. Yeah. And I gotta tell you, I think well, the top thing about this movie is that right now you could go to a convention, cosplay one of those characters, and people would know immediately where you're from. Yeah. And that's how you know you have a, uh, like a blockbuster is if someone can immediately know what movie you're from. I would kill. Speaking of blockbusters, I would kill for more Marvel movies or any like any of those superhero <laughs> movies to look like this movie. Because the problem I have with those superhero movies is they look more like action, generic war movies. They're too clean. Right. Yeah. I, I want that. prosthetics that make a guy look like he has a little face. You yeah. know what I mean? Like Big more face. because that's what that's Big what tiny. the genre should be. You well, want you want everything to be Ragnarok. Yeah, kind kinda. Yeah. Right. I'm not Jeff, against that. Give me Jeff Goldblum ending saying, "Well, your revolution. Where it's a it's a tie." You know what I mean? Like that, what, that, what a beautiful it's moment. It's your birthday. Yeah, hilarious. <laughs> great. I want it's more pleasure. of that. Well, I mean, this movie, though, is practically like Doctor Who villains. Like, just people with yes. stretched faces and craggly nonsense. Yes. I would, I would even argue they're different because these are supposed to be real, like... People no, slash no. Italians, whereas Doctor Who, those are aliens and stuff. Right? I, I like aliens. Italians more than you do, apparently, because this looks like there's a leak at the nearby nuclear plant. <laughs> like everyone's like, you know my, you know how my forehead was normal sized. <laughs> well, now I'm. F- but I'm forehead I, I, man, but and I, I vote for the Knicks. It's to show that the evil within has disfigured the body without. Right. Ex- that's that, why Tess is so pure and beautiful. I don't know if you're fucking person. with me, but you're, that's totally it, though. Meanwhile, I Dick know. Tracy is just a giant penis driving around in a hot rod. Wow. I mean, he is. No, but if you actually read the comics he back in the day, penis. which maybe one of us has. Maybe. Um, maybe. For research purposes. Uh, those prosthetics are very accurate to yeah. what those villains look it, like. But it's great, though, because it, it doesn't it just, look... It just looks way creepier in person than on, it does in print. Let, let, me, let me clarify. Let me add on to that. I don't think it looks like, oh, those look bad because they're just trying to be accurate to the comics. Those look good because they are trying to be accurate. You know what I mean? Like they No, no. I mean, I will say Fitzy is on the money. It just should have been a Tim Burton movie then who can direct silly nonsense. Is, like, it would have been a Tim Burton movie, but he was busy at the same time doing Edward Scissorhands that year, the previous year doing Batman, and during that same year doing The Nightmare Before Christmas, this, which he didn't direct, but he they did put not his name it. on it. He gets a lot of credit mm-hmm. for that, and he should not. And, and at this point, he's pitching Nick Cage as Superman. This <laughs> looks better than a Tim Burton movie. I it's disagree. Not, what? It's no, I disagree. Why did you invite him? Oh, you. Nick, why did if, you invite if, him over if, here? If, 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 I'm, cut the mic. Cut the <laughs> fucking mic. If, if T. If T Burtz did <laughs> this Not movie, in this house. <laughs> it would be a better movie if T. Burtz did this movie because T, Tim Burton at this point knows how to throw together a really okay. good movie. But I think this movie, again, going back to the visuals, looks better than Tim Burton's stuff. But similar. Similar. Though. Okay. What is your favorite uh, costume slash aesthetic of the film? I just, they're in the very beginning. Of, I mean, I like Dick Tracy a lot. Sure. Right. I think that his like very clear, clean look works for me. It's very like, man in the yellow hat. Yeah. <laughs> <It's very laughs> but like it, something about it is like very like cheesy, like 40s heroic. Okay. But also like. You know, it, it's very specific, right? With that that like clean yellow look, uh, it just works for me. But also, there's that scene where all the weird gangsters are kind of sitting around together. The one with the three the three foreheads and the small face and all all that stuff. Mm-hmm. That stuff, I think, is really really cool and an interesting choice to do as like big as they did, mm-hmm. um, and to also kind of like to work as much as they did together. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I think I think a worse movie could pull like a let's say Robert Rodriguez does this in like a Spy Kids movie. Right. Clear that's gonna be bad. Right. It's gonna look like, oh, they just made them look mutated and weird. Sure. It just didn't fit the comics. But something about this, like these look like it's like just a degree away from what a real person might look like with so, those particular features. So you that's what really works for me. So you show it should have been Tim Burton Claymation. No. <laughs> no, I like that it's real people. But exactly. Maybe. What about you, Christine? Same question. Well, with the color palette, it's hard to tell who's bad and who's good because they're all in bright colors. Big. Oh, big that's issue true. In the movie, I mean, I really, he's wearing yellow. I mean, who's lime green? How do I know if they're evil? That's no, what well, Disney has taught there, me. Nobody. Jokes aside, though, like this movie does a, a good job visually to like 
coordinate who the good guys and who the bad guys are. Because what we were talking about earlier, right? Like, the movie doesn't make any sense, so they have to just be like, at all times, this guy's a bad guy, this guy's a good guy. But color-wise, they don't do that. Color-wise, not. I mean, facial prosthetics, maybe. Yeah. Yes. But who's the worst person? Spoilers alert. Was always wearing black whenever that right. person and we never see the face. was on screen. Morally, where does Dustin Hoffman lie? We don't know, and we can't. Well, I mean... We don't want but to know. I, I, I will go to say, the dark web. <laughs> I, I will say, though, like... I want a creation scene like the Joker in Batman 89. Oh, my God. Well, but, but like, you have a bunch of, like, melty face mutants, like, you're watching the Oblongs or something from Old <laughs> Party you know? Like, but, like, that scene where he comes out of the bath and he's dripping and there's that German sign. And he says, what I could do with the materials? And he's like, the mirror! Like, you understand that he's a melty man. I, but, but these guys aren't melty men. They're just Italians, right? Like, th- th- this is just Dude, a stylized word. As a where Belgian, guys have... I'm not comfortable with you calling a guy named Flathead an Italian. He's just like, a flat... he's Oh, a... Are, should he be Belgian? No, he should be one of Professor X's rejects. Like, <laughs> this, like we need... We need so a... he's X-Force. Right. Right. <laughs> we just need someone going... You know, you have a very unfortunate set of skills that I need you. <laughs> but that's just what these guys look like in this world, which is what I'm saying works for me. No, you're right. Ugly people are evil by definition. Thank and you. Thank, okay. Oh, my God. No. No, but, but like that, but no, that, was, yes. that was like 1945. Like, I'm sorry you have gout, but that makes you the villain. Like, <laughs> Gout guys are bad guys. I always say it. I always say that. Sometimes loud and unprompted. <laughs> <laughs> you're there at the old country buffet like gout is evil and you're just like wow you're like what wow that's fuck a shame. T- we so, had a no, longhorn we have we have to put a brakes here because okay. fitzy was at the premiere oh true at, at, I was. at walt disney world studios and resort i this was is a disney flick? i was very excited because was Roy um there? glenn headley who played test true heart Rest in peace, Glenn Headley. R.I.P. Rest in power. Um, she was married to John Malkovich at the time, and I spent my entire evening. She's dead. Yes. John Sorry. Malkovich is still alive. I spent the entire what? evening hoping, against hope, that John Malkovich would come back to Star Tours where I was working <laughs> that night. And basically, we got a lot of drunk people from the press who all got Dick Tracy fedoras. And oh, if I heard. No. I got a dick hat from a dick head mm. one more time. <sighs> Might want to rephrase that. I could have I could have retired on a dollar they gave me every time they said that. Yeah. And um, I did not meet Glenn Hetley. I did not meet John Malkovich, but I did meet Richie Sambora. How I don't know Richie why Sambora? he was there. How was Richie Sambora, though? Cool. cool Super experience. nice, because I had no idea who he was. Ah. <laughs> well, that'll do it. I'm standing in an orange polyester jumpsuit with a name tag on. We're just chit-chatting. Sure. He was dating Cher at the time. Sure. Who and could have been in this movie? I was going to say. Yeah. It was it was a very interesting story. I mean, it was fun to be at a quote-unquote premiere, which really wasn't a premiere because oh, sure. just kept the theme park open. So, Wife Candace, one day you get her drunk and sauced and sweet. And she'll tell you how she met uh, God, Matt Damon and uh, Lenny Fishburne and Lawrence Fishburne. And uh, she... Cause, when they did uh, Contagion at CDC, she was their point person. So she met them all. They filmed with her. She met Brian Cranston. She went to the red carpet premiere. Oh, damn. She was in Hollywood. Lawrence Fishburne's first uh, movie or acting type role was on Pee Wee's Playhouse. Yes. Which Pee Wee, of course, Cowboy 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 and, yeah, and, and that brings us back to Danny Rapid. Elfman and Tim Burton. The full circle. So listen, listen to the riff. And by the way, Fitzy. Fucking A, that was a good story. That is a good story. That is a good story. I met Jimmy Carter one time. He wasn't charming. He was just a nice guy. He's a nice guy. I met, uh, well, I probably shouldn't tell this story about some celebrities I met, but. There he was urinating next to Kid. Let's say he's a wrestler, and his name was. Uh, let's let's make a let's make a, a fake name Driss Carico, uh, and let's say he got really drunk and tried to fight me for taking a picture of him and the guy I was producing for at the time. <laughs> Learned later because he was with a woman who was not his wife. Uh-oh. Uh oh, oopsie uh, doodles. Yeah, that guy. Uh, that so guy's a mess. I one time met this like like really cute twosome. Please, me and Christine are sitting right here. Candace and Fitzy. 
they, they, they were pretty funny and pretty, like, pretty charming. And then, like, Ed and I tried to go up to, like, meet them. And they said I, I wasn't was funny. Up. And then they, they walked on. And then they said Larry was funny only because he had power. He and did they, have power. And then they cut his brakes and replaced him. So, you know, like... <laughs> First time that Candace <laughs> demanded a guy stop, and he didn't, so she killed him. Do these jokes even work without no? It doesn't matter. Larry's great. L- Larry's almost funny, almost. and he, he rules us all. He's and he a, makes a wicked cheesesteak and do- fries with cancer on. I top. I was just okay. So this is a this is kind of a deep. Are you gonna, are you gonna crack out your so, resume? Sorry, myopia fans who uh, have never had low bites, or will never have low bites, Larry. Because who is the, the guy who is kind of our <laughs> ringleader? And because you all live in Australia. Kind of, right. <laughs> kind of our ringleader for uh, Cineprov. He, uh, he runs a food truck called Lil Bites, and the man's from Philly, and he makes incredible food. Sometimes. Just, no, I've never had a bad meal on that truck. The only thing that kind of was not great and was my fault is we deep fried a meatball. Because <laughs> <laughs> you think it might be good because, like, Right. Hey, here's what I'll say. Okay, we'll play this game. When you try to cook something, yeah, you hope that it tastes greater than the sum of its parts. And the deep fried meatball tasted like the sum of its parts, and therefore not great and not awful because a meatball is good and the deep fry batter. Anyway, I work. On, I occasionally work on the truck. And All right. Uh, back to Dick Tracy. Back to Dick Tracy. So I have a thing. So obviously we were talking about um, God bless uh, Glenn Glenn Headley. Headley playing Tess Trueheart. When I look up the cast, though, of this, do you are you aware that Sean Young is also credited as being Tess Trueheart? Who is Sean Young? Oh, Sean Young is from uh, Blade Runner, the original Blade Runner. She's yeah. the one who's a replicant. She was in Stripes. She oh. was in a lot of movies, and then she, like, lost her mind, and she, was like, in she the, broke the, into a... a, a she bunch of those, chased like, after Tim Burton in a Catwoman outfit to get yeah, cast as Catwoman. early 90s, yeah. like, yes. girl in the movie where she... So, you know. so my question is... Um, and so, myopia no, fans and viewers, and those of you friends of the deep web, why is Sean Young also listed on here? I wonder if she was originally Tess, and maybe she did a, little, a few of the scenes, and then maybe she did something crazy and got canned, and they ended up putting Glenn in because Sean is known for being kind of a loose cannon. And I, I would like to know more. So if you know, uh, write us in. Let me know. I want to know more. Mm-hmm. Educate me. I think the casting of Glenn was perfect. Oh yeah, was, no, no, she's she's great for it. In fact, the, in fact, the, what's her name? Um, Sean Young is not a good casting for that. So that's why I just want to know why is she on here? Like, is is there some like deep shit that went I down? Think the that casting causes... of this movie is like unbelievable. Oh yeah, I mean this is a this is super all star casting. I mean there were people in here I didn't even realize were in this movie. Um, oh. Are you aware that Catherine O'Hara? Was in this movie? No. no. She was... Of Schitt's Creek fan? Te- yes. Texie Garcia. What? And I'm going to shut you right now for just a second. Because <laughs> the kid's original casting was Macaulay Culkin. <gasps> way better. What about but way better? But how long was that same year, right? No. I, he, no, no, no. Shut your whore mouth. Fucking hate this kid. He turned it down to do Home Alone, though. Good for him. Oh, good, good choice. For him. Wow. Second I hate qu- this kid. Second question. Mm. The original director... Because it was written and produced by um, Warren, Warren Beatty. Beatty. He asked, I think it was one of you two who pointed this out, Bob Fosse to direct the oh. thing. Oh, that's appropriate. And you know what? He turned it down. And you know who was the second person they asked? Scorsese. What? Mar- Marty Scorsese. But this was the same year as Goodfellas. <laughs> Better than I Goodfellas. thought you were going to say Dementia 13. <laughs> <laughs> I said in the riff. It's Francie, Frankie Ford Coppola. Oh, shit, same <laughs> thing, whatever. This movie is more accurate to the Italian experience than Goodfellas. But to quote you here, yeah. Sean Young was originally supposed to be there, but she was fired by Warren Beatty a few days before filming because uh, Warren Beatty apparently wouldn't, she wouldn't sleep with him, is the rumor. What? At least that's what she claims. Although, uh, uh the, though, 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 though. Uh, well, Madonna sure was fucking him, so she got in the movie. The mom who, the mom of the kid, the real mom of the kid, mm-hmm. uh, disputed this because she came in so demanding and apparently slapped the kid on the first day of set, so Beatty fired him anyway. 
I made a mistake. I believe that. And Beatty made a mistake of saying, I made a mistake casting her. She she came to set and ruined everything. I felt bad about it. I will say, based on the chemistry, it feels right. But this movie is just... There's a reason why it's not Batman, and it's that it seems like watching this, everything went wrong. Yeah. There was a vision. It's like you watched... It's like someone watched Batman, but kind of like didn't get that you'd need to make an, an at least a, a like a B minus story to it. You know what I mean? Hey Tim, what if there was other colors than blue and black? Sure, I, I don't know anything about those, but I, 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 I don't, I don't yeah. know, man. All right, dude, if you want to try them. I mean, Jack Nicholson got a really cool Cure album for him after that, but like, like. If if I had to pick between the cast, I would pick clearly Michael Keaton and Jack Nicholson. Yeah, come on. But this movie kept all the fake newspaper printers in business. <sighs> all the spitting newspapers you could possibly. It was so want. many, and it definitely it made like red end tables very hot this season. Yes, but hang on. The, the, Ikea. But going going back to the spinning newspapers and the like red end tables and kind of the weird color design. There are there's like a string of movies that exist that are kind of in this same vein, and you see those constantly aging better than movies that came out around the same time. Let's compare uh, Speed Racer, which I'm a little biased because I love fifteen hang years on. later. Right. Compare that to Transformers Two, which came out I think around the same years time. Later. Right. Uh, man, I actually think Speed Racer came out. I mean, the same it's because year. when you do a weird color palette like that, you no longer date the film. Right, exactly. And that's what it does. This it, movie, it's, you, visually, you know, has aged you know very it's well. It's supposed to be somewhere in the 20s, There's a 30s, vision. 40s. There's a vision. But you wouldn't know what year it was actually filmed. And it doesn't matter because that's and, when Dick and Tracy that's, takes that's place. That's the trick, you know, yeah. is when you have something that's this strange looking, much like Edward Scissorhands. And this is a, it's color I, I, palette. It's I, the same thing. You can't tell when this that is movie a better movie than Edward Scissorhands. What? I I I firmly no. no. Yeah. Visually, I think this accomplishes more. I think there's so like especially the stuff Ow. in the beginning when he's in the when uh, he's in the theater and he goes like, "I'll be right back." And then they have a scene, and then he comes back to the theater. That's so good. I That's bit my knuckle than, so hard it hurt. That's I think hard. I think Burton's best is better than these movies. I think Ed Wood, Big Fish. I think those are. Better than this, but I think this is better Batman than Edward Scissorhands. Eighty nine, though, that was the year before. That's a. I also don't. I, I also don't really care about it. Uh, Edward the mirror. The mirror. Yeah, who cares? Yeah. Doesn't do anything for me. They have a purple man in here because Prince was in the other movie. True. So, do you want to hear some other 1990s films that came out this year for yeah. comparison's sake? Schindler's List. I would love to. No. All right, so um, The Handmaid's Tale. What? Which I didn't realize that was the, the original. Yeah, yes. the original. Um, Dances with Wolves. That's better than this. Home Alone. Better than this. Edward Scissorhands. Not better than this. Total Recall. Mm, on the same level, probably better. Uh, Cry Baby. Okay. I, I've not better. Seen it. Awakenings. Not seen it. What? Wait a minute. Isn't Awakenings the one with uh, it's De Niro and Robin Williams? Yeah, Robin Williams. Yes. Oh God, that's such a sad movie. Hunt for seen. Red October. Better. Uh, this is better. Than Goodfellas. That was. Better than, this. better than this, but uh, not as authentic. The Godfather Part Three. This is better than that. Misery. Uh, Kathy Bates. Better than this movie. P.S. Kathy Bates was apparently also in this film. Dick Tracy. No, shut up. Yes, she was. No, you after can't all make that, this shit up. Yes. Everybody, go listen to our riff along to see what we're talking about. Yeah. Kathy Bates is in this movie. Yes, she is. No and, shit. Yeah, and Pretty Woman was also this year, and that's yeah, all y'all need to know. And and of course, Tremors, the the best movie of all time. I haven't <laughs> seen Tremors. I would bet. Tremors is probably just above this movie. Wait, did you say you haven't seen Tremors? Not seen Tremors. Tremors is so good. We can do a Tremors episode. We already did. Nick, Evan has not seen. I would do another. Can we do a revisit? Yeah. (laughs) We'll call it. um, Tremors two. Clockwork Orange. We just strap people's eyes open. Yeah, or the Louis Colo machine. We want them to watch. We call it Tremors one comma two. That's right. Not Tremors two. Very different than Tremors two. I don't want to watch Tremors two. You don't have to. But. This like the is the first a, one I saw was Tremors three. But the original it's not the one, one where they better. they fart and they fly or something. That's right. Because <laughs> a lot of, okay, so a lot of the movies from this particular time period mm-hmm. have not aged well in a lot of ways. Edward Scissorhands, up. I'm including. That's a personal opinion. I don't know what the popular opinion on Edward Scissorhands is. To be honest with you, it's been a while. 
Has it aged well? I haven't seen it in a while. I haven't, I mean, I haven't seen it in a while, and I can tell you right now, if we watched it, it'd be amazing. Really? That and Ed Wood, which is the same era. Ed Wood that is, and Ed, Batman well, 89. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not saying every Burt movie. Ed Wood is head and shoulders better than this Yeah, movie. but they're all the same era. We're shoulders. talking Wasn't late areas in the early movie? 90s. <laughs> <laughs> but is, is Johnny Depp's recent problematic status going to affect future viewings of Everything his movies? Everything but Ed Wood. I think Ed Wood is good enough that it stands on its own, but I see your point. I... Uh, it's like Cara Dune in uh, Mandalorian. You're like, oh, I... Like, I'm like... My, my biggest problem with the finale of the latest Mandalorian season is that Cara Dune didn't, like, have a violent diarrhea death. You know Which, what I mean? That's is the this only a thing spoiler? It was only thing it was missing. Yeah, sorry, spoilers. I don't, I don't watch the show. She doesn't get so. food poisoning and die because of it. Because that would make a great season. I mean, it would make a different season, that's for sure. Cool. Much better. For My me. name is Grogu. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. Kara didn't die because she had diarrhea and died. She went back to her home planet. Just, I'm just like, why? You shouldn't be happy. She can't go back to her home planet. Okay. Good. It's Alderaan. Alderaan. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I anyway. knew people on that planet. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, yeah, he's who, like, who did you know who died? Yeah, he's like, you lose anyone? And I'm just like, yeah, that's where she's from, dude. Like... That's where she went to high school. I babysat that dog one summer when I was getting up money so I could buy a bike. <laughs> Not about school. Dick Tracy. Doesn't matter. Better than Dick Tracy. Back to Dick Tracy. Well. All right. So uh, ask a really um, insightful question, Nick. Oh, God, help me. You want me to do it? Okay. Go ahead. God, I already uh, asked the last one while you were off. Okay. So movie-wise. Uh, Are you not going to let her ask well, a question? Well, I guess or? the so, – my thing is, Man comic time. book movie-wise, where do you throw this movie? Because, like, do other movies stand on the shoulders of this movie? Because uh, I think no, it does no, no, an no. incredible back job. Up. But... Back your salty ass up. <laughs> 89 was Batman 1989. Batman, the animated show, came out this year. This feels more like Batman, the animated series. I wish oh. that more... Uh, Which more... also Danny Elfman did the music for. My okay. Danny Elfman was a slut for punishment. I, I'm pretty sure I said this off mic. I wish more Marvel movies took cues from movies like this because my biggest problem with the MCU, which obviously... Metric a, system. A triumph, the metric system. Um, uh, obviously, the, the MCU is a triumph and, like, uh, unbelievable, right? If you told somebody 30 years ago, hey, we're going to make 70 movies that everyone's going to see and, like, kind of buy into the narrative of, you'd, you'd, you'd sound insane. But but my biggest problem with those movies at the, is that they visually are not very interesting or comic booky. They're all very like they're closer to like you know Mission Impossible uh, than they are Dick Tracy. And I really wish they were closer to Dick Tracy. You know this what I mean? This movie, Dick Tracy. This particular movie, visually speaking, I mean. This feels like a injustice video game. I you know I don't think I think that uh, I see what you're saying, but to nitpick and split hairs. I think the Injustice video game could have dealt with with some could have used more influence from movies like this because the game is boring as hell. Looking visually, the game is great. It's a fun game. I like that game. Okay, so my question is, where the fuck are we with the plot? But second, I can't, I can't tell you because this movie is insane. So much of it is guys talking that in just like roundabout cyclical ways, uh, and like you know if if. If I have to give a critique of this movie, and I will, it's is that pointless. a lot of this movie is just running, is just like hamster wheels, right? Like nothing in this movie progresses. You could cut out the middle 45 minutes of this movie and it wouldn't change a lick, you know? Well, okay. So essentially the thing is, uh, I, I keep wanting to think it's Sean Bean, but it's not. It's Scarface. We have a Scarface movie here by <laughs> Al Pacino. Yeah, absolutely. And he's taking over the other crime syndicates because it's Scarface and it's not Scarface. And it's like, and again, this is a Batman plot. The problem is Dick Tracy is a weekly comic in the newspapers, which is like between four panels and then on Sunday, it's like a 10 panel uh, comic. And colored, I might. And Batman literally came out the year before, and it was the biggest movie of all time at the time, right? And so that's what it's trying to do. We're trying to make a Batman movie, and so they follow the Batman arc exactly, in which there's a hero who's a small-time hero dealing with small-time villains, and then all of a sudden, Sean Beam, who's actually Al Pacino, kills everyone else 
which also happens when the Joker kills everyone else. It's true. And then, you know, he seduces a beautiful woman, which is Vicky Vale or Madonna. It's the oh, same plot. Oh, oh, oh. Exactly. <laughs> Film-wise, absolutely, this is a, like, very cheap ripoff. But I think it does some things. I mean, I, I don't need to No, I mean, again, if it was the Italian Spider-Man or whatever... It would, or no, it sorry, Turkish Spider Man is the, the oh movie. Oh my god, Turkish Spider Man's great, but but that's what it was. If it was or like, Japanese Spider Man, oh man. But but the, like that's it. the name of the game, right? Yeah. Like if you're just like, what if it was another language and it was just the pastel version of mm-hmm. Batman? It's a cool movie. Well, I think this movie is a is I would describe it as a cult classic. But when you look at cult classics, I think the reason they become cult classics is you have to look at like. The uh, the the pop culture kind of surrounding them, right? Like, so so a uh, movie I really love. I said earlier, Speed Racer is a movie I like a lot. But really? that movie becomes so, right. I, I know. I said I talked about it on the show already. I know. I know. I'm not check saying a hundred episodes. Right. Ago. Exactly. But but what I'm saying is like the cultural context of this movie is kind of similar to that one, where it's like, oh, this is kind of like cat. Not only capitalizing on what was popular at the time, in this case Batman, in that case like Transformers, but also how does it twist and subvert those things? This one does it by having, by going, leaning further into those comic book aesthetics. That one does it by like, I mean, making it real movie, right? Like, I think you like this movie much more than you expected to. I, we, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very lukewarm on this movie, I think. Okay, Fitzy, come on, help me get out of this man funk. Yeah, I, I've definitely dug us a Well, as someone I, who might be closer to Warren Beatty's demographic, <laughs> I totally get, like, you can see where it's someone who is a fan of the comics that was his, it's a Warren Beatty movie. Mm-hmm. This is what he grew up on. I can see where he was taking some cues from other things. He wanted to cast his girlfriend, who happened to be at the time Madonna. And um, he was much better in this movie than he was in her Truth or Dare documentary, where he pretended to be interested in her musical career. So true. <laughs> Not her titties. Um, well, I mean, I will say, too, like, this does, I mean, and Batman is starts the era of the superhero com- like movie, but this starts a noir version, right? Like, I thought it was more a comic strip as opposed to comic book. Like a right. comic strip yeah. is a different aesthetic. Like I like visually, it's neat. It's neat to watch. It gets boring plot wise. Yeah. Well, and and like for me, it feels like a neo noir. I mean, it, it's a long way off, but like ninety seven's L A Confidential feels yes. a lot like this, right? Like. Where it's very like fedoras yeah. dipped down. There's a lot of like cafe scenes. Well, like ironic um, connection between those two. They originally had one in Breathless Mahoney be played by Kim Basinger. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. And also in both movies, they just kicked the shit out of Danny DeVito. But in one, they just <laughs> figured it out. Dude, that scene where Russell Crowe kicks the shit out of Oh, my God. Oh. Ow! <laughs> I love Russell Crowe. Um, for those of you so who don't you know, so you leaned back and said something funny. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I told you I'm trying to uh, space out what I say, so I lean back from the microphone so I won't talk. She, she wants to do the silent Bob thing, where she says something profound once every hour, and then we edit her out anyway. The exactly. problem is she wants to do it every 15 minutes. Exactly. Or that's why. That's why I have to sit back to be good. Yep. Comedy tremens here. If, if we edit it, perfect. But every oh, four minutes. Y'all. You know what? I'm not going to tell you the cool fact no, I know now. No, no, no cool you don't fact. get it. No, I want to know. It's okay. Matt Cohen would have interrupted you too and told him about your soft, like his like sci fi fantasy. <laughs> Damn. Anyway, Damn. I wrote a book. Damn. 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 You overcooked it. Damn. Don't so, know what that means. Soggy bottoms. <laughs> Nobody First likes the soggy bottom. Soggy yeah. bottom. Soggy bottom, boys. Aside. Uh, I am curious where you guys. Fall uh, well because we haven't talked about. Do you guys like this movie? I'll tell you what. If this was on at like a bar or mediocre party, the the volume was down. <laughs> no, no, I, I don't. I, 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 okay, no, just mediocre party is a really good way of putting it. So the, one of my favorite bars in Atlanta is a place called the Bookhouse Pub. Sure. And what they do is they always have like high-minded movies on. 
usually at low volume. Victory like, Sandwich Bar, same way. Grizzly, I saw Grizzly Man there. And oh, stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, this movie, if... Okay, I got my wife... Uh, I think it's Criterion, if not. But it's it's the, the DVD version of Yellow Submarine, where you can opt into the... Full movie or just the music version? Way better. If you just played Way better. the Danny Elfman music and had these visuals, it is a, like, the movie is not best picture. The no. cinematographer, Insane. dude, gorgeous. Costume design, set design. Everything about this movie. The miniature work. I, I, I will take this movie over, say, uh, the second Thor movie. or Scissor what? Hands. Why? Because, no, no, but... This looks like Nighthawks come to life, dude. It works. Uh, no, it's I, great. I, but like my point with scissor hands is different. But this has functionality. They're miniatures. There's matte paintings. Yeah. I don't like modern movies um, unless you have a master at work. Only because it's all CGI. This movie is practical. Yeah. When there's a, like a little car driving down like a Technicolor street. It aged so well because of that. Like, you could almost do halfway between a robot chicken sketch and, like, Don Hertzfeld. Like, yeah. Like, it's all, like, modern. I mean, that's why I like Batman 89. But, like, he jumps off a, off the building and it turns into a cartoon. You're just like, well, yeah, there's no CGI. Let's make it. Let's, let's animate that fucker. Yeah. Right? Oh, we're on the same page here, my man. And, by the way, Madonna, you don't need to animate any of that shit. She is gorgeous. She's in she pride, is baby. smoldering. I remember really, really, really liking this movie, and I thought I was going to be liking it just as much today. It wasn't as good. No kidding. Yeah, I mean, I think now as an adult, I can appreciate the cinematography and the costume, and I'm like, oh, well, all these things are cool, and I agree with the whole, like, just playing Danny Elfman or just watching it silently. I think would be, I'd be like, oh, that's really badass looking, um, but the I remember the story being really great and the music being really awesome. It, the songs, I mean, like, that they're kind of like, eh. And the story's like, eh. Plot-wise, it's very muddy. Yeah. I have no... I, I, I think it's like... I don't know. Maybe as a kid, it makes more sense. I think it's, it's a little so... more cut and dry, so it's easy to understand. Well, when when Nick was describing it, uh, he was like... The way he described it, I was like, oh, I was looking too hard into this movie. This movie does not have anything going on. Like... And again, comic book Sunday strip wise, adaptation wise, yeah, you don't need anything more than Dick Tracy's the good guy, these guys are the bad guys, and he's gonna he's gonna crack the case and figure him out. But I was like, maybe there should be a, a just a dash more, even like a twist where it's like, which there's a small one, but but you knew the twist was coming the whole time, not the person you thought it was gonna be, but yeah, the fact but that you knew there was a masked villain that was behind everything and we were all going to find out like yeah had you never known there was this other villain you knew there was a twist coming yeah you were like oh eventually they'll reveal who it is i didn't know know. that particular character was going to be the twist but it was like it didn't matter because i was like oh that's the detective twist well and dick van dyke eventually wearing the like dick tracy robe like yeah 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 yeah. you're just like fine and to me this feels like Again, I, I hate to harp on it because it, she's not even listening. But I it's, am listening. It's the better show, but like the Batman animated series. Yeah. And only because if this there was a Dick Tracy animated series based on this, it would make more sense. But in the meantime, it feels like they compressed six seasons into one. Well, right? that's, a, that's a, I would say that's a big problem with movies like this and a lot of comic book movies up until. Probably Spider-Man 3. I, I think Iron Man 1 is probably the first one to figure it out. That, like, you watch, say, Spider-Man 3, a big weakness of that movie is, like, they try to compress Spider-Man's, like, week-to-week dealings into a two-hour story. But superhero movies, and I would argue that Dick Tracy's kind of a superhero of some kind. Yeah, Those need to be short stories dealing with, like, one arc, one thing. But they, that's hard to say, and they... Is you it know. the Clone Wars dilemma? It's the Clone Wars dilemma. And Absolutely. Then, yeah, and then you're trying to, but then you go back, you make six right. seasons of a cartoon, you're like, wow, you this explains just, everything. And I think maybe they really thought they could do that with Dick Tracy, yeah, too. Yeah, and there's it's some never superheroes and some yeah. fictional characters that, like, work better. For instance, I think, uh, like, that's part of the reason we've seen Batman have so much success, is he works better, right? Iron Man works better. This. But Spider Man, for instance, is much better in, like, a TV series where you could see the week after week, you see. Raven the hunter kind of stalking him or him 
dealing with the week to week of him being at school. Dick Tracy's the same way, I think, where he's like, uh, I've got a couple of cases going on. I got these dames coming after me. I'm just kind of existing in this world. If we had this as a mini series, well, I mean, I will say I think you're right, but I think the problem is almost the opposite, which is that really. Dick Tracy has always been the film noir, like Raymond Chandler type, where he's like, he's cigarette smoking guy. And then the year before, Batman was not only the biggest movie, it was the biggest movie of all time. And they're like, but he's also a comic guy. (laughs) Yeah. And what if we made him more like that? Because it does seem like they, like, if you told me, like, in 87, both Tim, like, both DC, because Tim Burton came later, but both DC and Warren Beatty were trying to pitch the same movie, right? <laughs> Good point. Are, I and see then, where you're going with this. And then at one point, Warren Beatty hit a speed bump, so he was the year later, and he's and then the, 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 the suits were like, but what if he was also Batman? Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Because that's what that feels like, because right. there's a fully developed movie, and then he also sometimes is Robin. Like, because the kid is clearly Robin. Well, it's true. You know, it's just one of those things where it's fascinating, like, what movies get made after a, like, uh, a movie that is biggest of all time gets made. Because everybody tries to do their version. So, I'll say this. um, Warren actually wanted to make this as early as the early 70s, attempted to purchase the rights for it. And finally got them in 1985. Okay. And in 85, he wanted to make the film, and he pitched it to Spielberg, who turned it down. Classic and then he Spielbees. and then he pitched it to Scorsese. Well, he just he had then, just done Star Wars. Who then, then turned it down? Bullshit. And so that's when Warren decided he had to direct it himself, and that's why it didn't come out until 90. Interesting. What was the first year? Um, so he, he wanted to purchase it in the mid-70s, and it took him almost 10 years to finally get the rights to it in 1985. You know what happened in 76? War. Superman. Oh. And so it's still, it's linked to the oh. Batman-Superman dialectic. No, this probably comes more from Superman than Batman. I uh, know, and I'm, I'm not, I mean, first of all, I mean, Candace, could... thank you for dropping knowledge bombs on You're us. You're welcome. Yeah. We See? Love it. We love it. See, that's I what happens it. when I sit up next to the microphone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But anyway, um, any thoughts? Because like the end of this movie is murky. The kid is involved. Madonna is the, like seducing Satan. And the longer this movie goes on, the worse it gets. That's that's my thought on this movie. The charm wears off very fast. I mean, they had set up. Like, they had nine thousand villains in this movie. Yeah. If they really wanted to do another one, they could have. Because God knows they had enough villains. First of all, we need to retire the Joker for 15, 20 years. But Hard like, agree. But Jesus like, Christ, I'm sick of the Joker. But, I mean, again, in 89, the year before this, when you have one villain, who are you going to pick? All jokesy. Right? And so that's why Fitzy is right. Like, And, and I, I agree with you. There's too many Marvel movies, but like that's what Marvel does. One villain at a time, mm-hmm. as opposed to DC, where there's like... You know what we need in Justice League or Suicide Squad? 7,000 characters! Purple guys, MacGuffins, <laughs> etc. Good point. I prefer the McMuffin. <laughs> um, but regardless, but the, the, like, that's the problem here. Yeah. Right? Like, you have the Joker. And you have all of his henchmen. But no one here is a henchman. Everyone has their own time. No, you're totally right. Is that, like, none of the... Because you can do... I. You can do the uh, multiple villains thing, right? Like, some of the Marvel movies have proven that they're... Like, uh, fucking Guardians 2 is a really good example of how you can do a couple of different villains or, or Ragnarok. But you gotta let a couple of those villains... You gotta let... You gotta throw some in the background, right? Like, in Guardians 2, there's the, those gold guys. Background villains, they still push the plot forward, but they're background. Not every... You gotta pick one antagonist to be the forefront, Right? Same as you have to pick one protagonist, you can do an ensemble comedy, right? Guardians again, great example. It's about the group, but Star Lord is clearly your protagonist. You know, yeah. all, all Chris P. Rat is your is your main character. Well, and again, since Batman was you know in the modern era in '89, 
we've had what uh four seven like ten times since he's been out since like you know Evans even been conceived. That's true. And and in that system, it's almost always one villain, and sometimes another villain sticks his cock in the way. Right. But again, it's just the just the tip of that villain, right? You don't get the whole. It's not we're giving just equal spotlight to those villains, which is a big problem with this particular. Movie. Everyone that he knows shows up. Right. Exactly. And it's like I, I get that if the concept of the, uh, the cinematic universe was out, maybe a different story. But like, there are like four antagonists of equal importance in this movie, and it's just bloated. It's just. Bloated and hard to follow because of that. If there was one guy pulling all the strings, cool. But there's really not. Or at least they don't do a good job. There is, kind of. But they don't do a good job of showing that he's the head Scarface object. Scarface for kids. Correct. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting because, you know, we talked about the prosthetics and the look about it. Yeah. I think one of the reasons why they did these over-imaginative faces and heads and prosthetics is to show that they were all different characters right. because you Which never you don't, do that. you don't even know their damn names. You're just like, oh, it's the big head guy. Oh, it's the flathead guy. Oh, oh it's yeah, it's fuckhead the, Mick. The creepy melty face guy. Like, because again, there's just there's too many people to keep track of name wise, character wise. Who are they? Who played them? Right. I don't even know. At one point, but I was just visually, like, who the fuck are these people? Is this still? Do, have we yeah. met you yet? Maybe. But I don't visually know. Visually, is a good way to distinguish those people. Yes. Right. Like again, going back to the Guardians of the Galaxy two example. The secondary villains all plated in gold, so it doesn't matter if you remember like who those people are. If you see people plated in gold, you know those are kind of your secondary villains. Right. This movie does it does enough to visually separate those guys, but not at all to narratively separate those people. Well, I mean, it screams the difference between Avengers versus Justice League. Absolutely. Because, Absolutely. Well, and again, I, I agree with Candace. I'm more of a Marvel person now than Same. a DC person, except for Batman. I'm but, a Batman guy. But. but, like, the Marvel Cinematic Universe started with a John Favreau hope, mm. and then it slowly built. And the second one wasn't great. The third one was interesting. Same. But every movie, it built and built and built. And that's what Batman 89 does. Yeah. There's one man, and there's one villain. <laughs> and then the second time, there's two villains. And guess what? The real villain is Christopher Walken, who's not even a real Batman awesome. villain. It works for me, dude. It's a masterpiece of a movie, but but the thing well, of I'm it not is that far, but <laughs> oh, I disagree. <laughs> that's another movie for another day. Absolutely. But at the end of the day, you have only two. At this point, if you were a Dick Tracy fan, you introduce everyone, and you're just like maybe stick to it, which feels like those Justice League movies where you're just like. You know, you haven't seen Cyborg, Aquaman, or Flash yet, but they'll be important. Here they are, baby! Yeah, no, it's to- this movie is totally like... And it's easy to say this now in a post-Justice League world where you're like, ah, this is a movie Science. bloated with trying to set up a bunch of characters. Because Justice League is this movie where it's like, here's the cinematic universe! Here's everybody! Here they are! They're all at the same time! Oh, good, now we have a movie. 40 minutes later, now that we've introduced everybody. Well, or it could be the opposite in that, you know, nowadays everything is expected to have five, six, seven expansions or versions of it. Maybe Warren Beatty went into this knowing this is probably the one time I'm going to be able to make this particular film because sure. I had such a hard time getting the rights and shopping it out to everybody and nobody wanted to do it and I'm having to do it by myself, so I might as well just include every but fucking thing I like make in it. cohesive story. Well, yeah, I know that, but I'm wondering if that's really the, the thought process behind it. Was sure, like, it's very possible. Was like, I'm just going to put it all in there because it's probably going to be the one time I'm going to be able to do this. Well, and I will defend a movie which people are, I mean... First of all, I don't like social media except for pornography, but... Yeah, porn hub rules, obviously. <laughs> so much porn. You make that account, you get stuff tailored to you. Well, I was going to say the first Wonder Woman movie, which is solid. I think it's a good movie. It it suffers from being... Well, the, the first two-thirds of it are good. Well, I was going to say the same thing, which is that it suffers from being, after 15 years of Marvel movies, and she's trying to carve her own way... Right. It suffers from being bloated and needed to pair into a bigger universe. So you get this this villain who's like, I'm so much bigger than the rest of the world you've established. And it's like, dude, if you like just kept up with the first two thirds of this movie, if you were on the same level, if you let this movie breathe and happen, 
this is one of the best superhero movies ever. Like well, two, the first two thirds are incredible. Well, and I just rewatched uh, China Syndrome, but it's just a bunch of white guys up above looking down, saying, "You could do more with this." And again, I don't hate that movie. I like the movie. I think no, it's the same. It's perfectly, fine. perfectly fine. But, but could have been better. But like that's the difference between it and like John Favreau doing Iron Man, where there was just a movie that no one gave a shit about, and he made a, a decent movie. If there was no effort on DC, and she made that movie, it would have been a fine movie, right? Like, and and to me again, tying it back to Dick Tracy, if there was no Batman, this would have been a fine movie. But Tim Burton had an aesthetic. He knew what he was doing, and also the villain mattered. In this movie, it was all about the hero. Michael Keaton is not anyone who would have expected to be Batman. He wasn't. True. And yet, he's a maniac, but then Jack Nicholson shows up and goes, you know what? Where does he get these wonderful toys? (laughs) And you have a movie because you have a maniac playing the villain. At this point, you just have people with prosthetics. There's no maniac. Yeah, there's there's no, just no. a makeup job. And you know what I saw with a makeup job? Cats. <laughs> this, this, is, this is better than cats. Oh, you're being unfair. No, no, no. But it was if there was a stone-faced man trying to kill the cats, <laughs> and then everyone else was a cat, right? <laughs> this jellical power is going to stop oh, L.A. I don't know. I think Al Pacino, I think, does a, a good job of being a villain in this and yeah, being a maniac. Great. I mean, he's a maniac. At one point, he is on stage dancing with Madonna and her backup dancers, showing them how to he's dance. And that, Throw out your hands. He's Throw just, out your tush. <laughs> he's just crazy. And you're like, oh, my God. You're, and he's like, we're going to make this the best fucking club ever. And he's just screaming and acting. And I was like, wow, he's He's he bad shit bonkers. Is he a villain or does he just want to put on a really good show? I mean, <laughs> um, have you ever met a director? The answer is both. <laughs> so. Bob Fosse's out there looking at him. Trust me. Yeah, but I, you know, I think he was going to, I think it was just too many of them. There was too many villains. Had it just been him and maybe a couple others, it would have been perfect. Well, they wasted Jimmy Kahn. I mean, he was in one scene and they blew him up. And he was in The Godfather. Oh, is that who? Is that? Well, yeah, I mean, that it's was the James same. It's, yeah. Okay. It's almost the same scene as when he went to the drive-thru with the canal. I know, but at least he had more. You got to know more about him than in just one well, scene I mean, where he like Mahana had four Clones lines. Series. We we just saw him in Elf, and he was pretty <laughs> no, good there. True. Well, Farrell didn't blow up oh. his car. <laughs> <laughs> You guys ready to wrap this down? Yeah, yeah let's do it. So. Uh, we're broken spirits now. Brandy, so. Brandicio. So, no, 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 Brando Show. That's about it. The Brando Show. Oh. See, that's what your morning show theme would sound like. Someday. Um, Brando, 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 Brando Show. Brando Show, yeah. He's doing a Brando Show. Um, yeah, final thoughts on this movie. I think plot-wise, it's a mess, a little lukewarm, uh, just so black plot-wise. Uh, but visually, this movie is striking and has aged in Insane. Like it is still better than most comic book movies look wise. Like I, the there's two movies I could compare it to, and it's Speed Racer and Spider Verse, and those movies are like, you know, the upper echelon of of good looking comic book movies. Uh, so ultimately, I'm gonna give this movie a positive review because those that factor does mean a lot, and I think the the performances are good, even though it's a little muddy. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, I'd say this is a, a positive flick. I, I, I liked it. I would recommend this movie, watching this movie once, ideally at a bar without sound. Sure. <laughs> the lovely fancy. Visually, it's a lovely confection. It's a delightful treat. Um, I would highly recommend, even if you're not a Madonna fan, and you might be a theater geek like me. Um, Steven Sondheim wrote the music. Oh my God! How did we not talk about that? And the soundtrack album that Madonna is featured on has some amazing songs and you really it's it's an overlooked gem even if you don't like madonna there's some amazing show tunes there it could have been a musical on its own so on that get the cd you can even it vogue is on there too so if you even like vogue <laughs> vogue is on that album so I like vogue. but I, w- I would still give it a thumbs up watch it once i mean it's you can see the sizzling chemistry between warren Beatty and madonna which gets expounded if you actually watch truth or dare to see the actual chemistry between the two of them which pretty much is parallel but 
watch it. What else are you going to do? It's COVID. Yeah, right. It's <laughs> true. Candace? Um, yeah, so I, mean, I, I had a good enough time. Uh, for those of you who didn't know who Stephen Sondheim is, did the music for Into, Into the, the Woods. Woods. And also Sweeney Todd, yeah, which ironically was also done by Danny Elfman and Tim Burton. Full stay tuned. Circle. That's I know, stay right? tuned and a half. I know, it's a creepy circle. Next life. October, <laughs> right? Oh, I'll totally. I would totally do that. And so, um, but I no, like Sasha vi- visually it's great. Costumes, great. Pra- I'm always one for practicals. That's why um, James Favreau's stuff for Elf and things like that have age so well because it's forced perspective and it's right. all practicals mm-hmm. and that's right like that that stuff just it's a winner that that way you can't tell like what year the bad cgi was from and um i'm a little sad that it's not as amazing and complex as i remember it to be but you know um i'm more uh, complex now as an adult than i was when i was like 12 when i saw this the, for the first time so yeah. that's okay and but I'll give it. I'll get, definitely give it a, a good one thumbs up. I am torn about this movie sure. only because I agree with everything the three of you said. I think we all kind of said the same thing, so right. not not a hard. But for me, since I love them Batman movies so much, sure. it feels similar. But this is like the Technicolor Dreamcoat version, right? Like because. They make actual miniatures. They make actual cityscapes. It's the they, fanfic. It's, they, it's, it's someone went I, home and made the fanfic. Well, that's what I was saying when I said they go farther into the aesthetic. I right. think that, that totally rules. Because, like, again, like, I've rewatched both of the Batman and Batman Returns recently, and there's these elegant, like, and sometimes they're hyper masculine, they're hyper feminine, like, they're stalled. Like, oh, that's these, not even. The gender portrayal of it no, all. No, no, no. But, like, there's statues of men reaching down and statues of women and, like, these beautiful buildings. But in Burton, they're all grayscale. And here, it's, like, Looney Tunes, Technicolor, Dreamcoat, like, like Dolly Parton, like, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. and, and, like, y- you Dolly. watch the two, like, <laughs> if I had a bar that had cool or decency, you'd have on one screen, 89 Batman, on the other screen, this. Right, like, Mm -hmm. and so, like, for me, what is my criticism? Warren Beatty should have had a real director direct this, which he wanted to. That's not his fault. It's not. (laughs) So, like, to me, this becomes then a passion project. It is a passion project, and because it's a passion project, the passion parts work. Like, because, and and it has the same tragic problem as like Casper '96, where you're just like, I love that movie. Did you grow up with Casper? So you should show up with Casper, because like Dan Aykroyd. Dressed as Dr. Like Ray Stans, yeah, yeah, yeah. goes like, y- who should you call? Someone else. And you're like, that's <laughs> okay. Oh, that's hilarious. But at the same time, that's the way this works here. Where you're like, you know who doesn't care about this? Robert De Niro. But at the same time, he's like, wait, you're doing Dick Tracy? Right? Like, that's mm-hmm. what it is. You're doing Dick Tracy. Except for Madonna, who's just like... I just came fresh off some good sex. What are you going to do? I'll be in your movie and show more cleavage than you expect from the 1940s. With a PG rating. Uh, right. I, unless you watch an HD where you can see them nips, girl. Mm. So them at nips. the end of the day, would I recommend this? This is a movie, if you haven't seen you have to see once. Yes. This is a see at least once. I think so. I totally agree. Especially if you're a big like comic book movie fan. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, at one point you got to watch it in like surround because like you're watching around. Like they do yeah. a good job with the sound mix. It's on HBO Plus where we watch, or HBO Max where yeah, we watched yeah, yeah. it. Finally on Roku. By the way. Finally. Fi- finally. And finally. apparently it's also on um, Hulu's premium subscription. Right. I just looked that up, so... And I will say, it looks great. And again, I I prefer this. I've seen 300. We did it a while ago. Um, I've seen Sin City. Great. Do it a while. Sin City and 300 sequel, you should never watch. But the color scheming there wants to be this one. Because this color scheme is gorgeous. Mm. It is. It looks like something. Is it is it what it should be? It should be for this world. This like what creates the universe, right? That's yeah. what, I mean, and I don't like the two electrons bird. and protons and neutrons. <laughs> that too. Everybody lives in a street, in a city, or a village, or a town for what it's worth. Oh my god! 
It's a great big universe. Yeah, we're all really. All right, right, let's slam we're this all episode. The size of Mickey Rooney. Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, I'll, <laughs> I'll reintroduce everyone on the panel, but if you enjoyed this, we did an entire commentary on this movie. Which was really fun. And it was either on Patreon for Myopia or the Cineprov Riff track. And if you have not been listening to us on Cineprov Riff, when we do one you have to pay for, I write an entire trivia. And we play some games, we have some fun, we drink some booze, and Candace tells me to stop talking to her. It's fun for everyone involved. <laughs> And if you are listening to this on the main feed, thank you. Because last year, we got an additional 35,000 downloads. Ooh. And in the meantime, we have subscribers on Patreon. We have riffs on Patreon. And I'm surrounded by some of the best people I know. Oh, so, Evan, agreed. will you sign off? Do you not know a lot of people? No. Evan Brando, right here. You can find me on Twitch at The Brando Show and on all the other socials at Evan Brando Show. And when I'm too drunk to help, he runs the games for us on Cineprov. Uh, that is true. <laughs> and the lovely Miss Fitzy. I'm Christine um, at Sugar Smack, S U G A R S M A K on Twitter. Um, copywriter by day, celebrity journalist by night. Mm-hmm. And Candace? I'm Candace. I don't have a cool Twitch account or a Twitter account yeah, or I got it again. any of those things. Uh, feel free to. I don't know. Talk to me on Facebook. Visit me at the Plaza when it reopens at the Find Fabulous Record. I mean, yeah, definitely. Show us our boobers. That's right. <laughs> well. And <laughs> Chris, uh, what is it? Only farmers. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so just, you know, feel free to send me a DM or whatever. I don't have anything cool like the rest of these guys. I just like hanging out with them. And of course, I'm Nick Hoffman, Riffer on Cineprov with these beautiful people. Stop. I my, my Kroger Plus card number. <laughs> no, oh, well, some humble brag. Somebody's got a Kroger Plus card. Anyway, um, I, I want to appreciate all of you who are listening here. We've had a hell of a year. We're starting our hell of a year 2021. Woo! Woo! Baby! And uh, by, of course, June will be in our eighth season here. Insane. And they insane. said it couldn't be done. It couldn't be they done. They said it shouldn't be done. <laughs> my, my doctor looked at how much I drink when I do this, and my he said, no, no, absolutely <laughs> not. Um, but of course, I want to thank everyone for listening, everyone for doing this. Sign up for our Patreon because the riff is magnificent, and Larry wasn't even here to tell me I should make more rape jokes. So, at the end of the day, um, thanks. Letterboxd, Facebook, Twitter, <laughs> reviews. Thanks, guys. Or even there. Love you. Bye. 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 Myopia Movies is a production of Do Better Podcasting. It is hosted by Nick Hoffman, edited by Nick Hoffman and Daniel Settis. The theme song is Shirt Shimmy by Kevin McLeod. Find his music on contact.com. It is registered under the Creative 4 license. Our regular panelists are Matthew Quinn, Daniel Settis, Nick Hoffman, and Jeremy Ryan. Thanks for listening. Please support our Patreon at patreon.com slash myopia. Thanks, guys.